Hello, <clears throat> how are you doing? I'm today in Surrey, glorious Surrey, we're not too far away from Guildford. I've come to take you, I can see it right over there, the amazing gunpowder works. You're gonna love this, I know you are. Stay with me, let's have an explore. Let's do it, see you in a minute. <laughs> In the Surrey Hills lies the very quaint and sleepy village of Chilworth. Just shy of Guildford, the area really encapsulates the Surrey countryside. But what you may not know is that the village also contains some very special history, that of the Chilworth gunpowder mills. In fact, so successful was this area for manufacture of gunpowder that it was in operation for almost 300 years. The gunpowder mills started operation in the 16th century and it was the Evelyn family that set up their gunpowder works in the area after being awarded the Royal Monopoly on Gunpowder Manufacture. And in 1626, the East India Company also established a gunpowder mill on the banks of the Tillingbourne. The gunpowder works was mostly famous for using gunpowder to supply its forces abroad. But by the middle of the 17th century, the gunpowder works at Chilworth were no longer run by the East India Company, but by other private enterprises. This would include the English government, and during the English Civil War, the mills at Chilworth helped to supply the parliamentarian forces with gunpowder. In the late 19th and 20th century, the powder mills suffered casualties due to accidental explosions on the site. As you can imagine, working in such a dangerous environment with improper health and safety it wasn't a question of if there would be an accident, but when. But why build here? Well, the main reason for this strange decision to put a huge gunpowder mills in a seemingly rural area of countryside so close to a major city was due to the location of the River Tillingbourne, which was, because of its fast flow, could easily be used to supply the powder water mills needed in its manufacture. But to add to how and why it was built here was also due to circumstance, in that the valley was full of alder trees which were ideal for making charcoal, another of the materials required to make manufacture of gunpowder. The raw materials for producing gunpowder were brought into Chilworth in barges on the river, and barrels of gunpowder were transported away from Chilworth in the same way. The demise of the site came when after the First World War there was a massive oversupply of factories manufacturing cordite and other explosives. Many of these places found themselves surplus to peacetime requirements and Chilworth was one of these. The Chilworth Gunpowder Company as it was last known closed in 1920 and what you can see is the last remains of this once thriving hub of Surrey industry. So, welcome. We're here and already we started our walk and it's just, these structures are just sort of sticking out like a sore thumb. It's exciting, isn't it? Right, but look, it's the first thing we're looking at. It's a CH, it means charge house. And this was preparing the dampened ground up charge for the incorporating mills. A beautiful building. There's more to come though, let's keep going. So to say that this place is huge is a little bit of an understatement. So we're, we're probably, we'll probably do what we can, but really the idea is to encourage you to come down here. I wasn't expecting it to be as big as it was. But then also, I suppose if you compare it with what we have in Kent, which is all gunpowder works, it's fairly similar, although the structures are sort of very different in decomposition and the way they're sort of burned out. For example, you've actually got tiling there. But... Wow, I wasn't expecting this. So it's my first time, obviously, as you can imagine. And I've only just started. And this is the, obviously, the river basin or the canal part they've uh, manufactured so they can transport the gunpowder. Truly remarkable. Well, we can explore it. Should we explore it? Come on, I think we should explore it. This probably really is the most exciting bit, isn't it? 
This is the Steam Incorporated Mills. It says underfloor gear room and blast proof walls remain, which you can tell. Look how thick they are. Oh my god, they're massive, aren't they? Exactly what you'd expect from a gunpowder mills. This is a raised wooden floor, would have been near to today's foot level, so roughly about here. It says where materials would have been taken in from the tramway. Each bay had a pair of iron edge runner milestones mounted above the remaining engine bases. Lightweight roofing and front screens were designed to direct any blast away from the machinery. So we've probably spoken about this before on the gunpowder mills that really the idea was heavy blast proof thick walls but then the roof to be fairly light so that if there was an explosion it could just sort of just it'd be less dispersal I suppose really although there would be a lot of shrapnel but uh, pretty cool isn't it Absolutely massive. I suppose really what we've got to sort of take into consideration is the fact that people are climbing on this and it's a lot of fun, there's a lot of people around today, which you can probably imagine it. You can imagine this place being a very popular place for people. The only difficulty is parking. I've got a mill, I had a bit of trouble trying to find somewhere to park today. But I did walk down here, fantastic. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a unique place. Complaining to death. death. <laughs> I love that. Look at this. What amazes me is really the fact that we've only just started walking and already you sort of encounter pretty much the main part of the complex. The fact that it's the fact that the amount of stuff that is here, but then in a certain way, it's similar to all gunpowder works, is that ideally it was in the middle of nowhere. However, what makes this place really unique is that it wasn't by a river. In terms, sorry, it wasn't um, at the on our sort of like coastal area, not like all was where you're sort of near Faversham and obviously you've got the swale and everything else. We are literally in countryside right next to Guildford and that's surely what makes this place really amazing sort of in the wrong area do you know what I mean We're carrying on, aren't we? <laughs> I still can't believe the fact that we've barely begun and already <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> we've arrived. <laughs> a mixture of uh, corridors and passageways which lead to the inner working of the actual factory itself. A truly remarkable. And again, you know, so there we go. It really is amazing. Right, so in the distance is one of the expense magazines. This is the next thing we need to look at. So what are you waiting for? Let's go look. So this is it. This is one of the expense magazines. The idea was that really these were for storage, really. Basically a huge 
glorified shed. <laughs> right, let's have a look around. Look at that. It's great they've got this trail and you sort of assume that by working your way round the outside you can hopefully get in everything you can. And they've done such a good job of it. You can, like I said, at the beginning you can get a map and you can understand it, but for today, like I said, it's about documenting the actual history of the buildings, the actual structure itself, what it meant, and the individual buildings. You, know, you can come down here and love them lovingly. You can love them lovingly, you can enjoy them lovingly. So this is uh, one of the swing bridges which was allowed punts to pass up to the new cut. The track would have rotated sideways to clear the stream. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so this is what they've called the wharf, which is where punts would have moored up to the wharf to load and unload materials. There are also wharves next to each expense magazine. So let's have a look. So basically, I'm assuming that this would have been a place to dock. The swing bridge is just up there. Amazing. Look at that. Huh. Okay, so this is what they've called the bridge abutment, which is the probable pack horse route for Blackheath. It connected the site to Guildford via the pack horse bridge to the north of the site. So this would have been a little beautiful bridge. These pack horses would have been coming over. Clippity clop. <laughs> Clippity clop everybody, clippity clop. Isn't that beautiful though? Lovely. Let's keep going. Right, come on. This is another swing bridge. I'm assuming that's the point at which the swing bridge would have pivoted. So obviously resting on that and then opening up when needed. There you go, look at that. Wow. Now this to me has to be the best part of the site, I think, because of just the sheer sort of uniqueness of how this looks. And uh, what this is, is it's a steam incorporating mills. It says, two bedstones, the remains of a boiler house chimney and steam engine bed remain. The chimney has a Bark scrubber fitted to stop flyaway sparks. It says worn millstones were stood on their side and covered in earth to provide protection from accidental blasts. Look at that, and then I mean, this is look at this, so cool. <laughs> In fact, you can just explore this, it's all okay, you know, no one's gonna get into trouble. You know, imagine, I mean, like, it's understandable when families bring bring people down here and, you know, you could even take someone on a date down here. I mean, it's just, well, if they like that kind of thing, obviously. Uh, but yeah, look at this. How incredible. here is just the sound of the birds, the running water. Oh, I'm loving it here, I really am. Can you imagine the fact that kids and adults are like just gives you an excuse just to sort of explore, doesn't it? You know, a place like this. An amazing place for an adventure, you know. 
And these are what you could see really as we're walking by and these are called the edge runner millstones it says a pair of edge runners light where an incorporated mill collapsed each weighs around three tons so all of these as we probably knew anyway were millstones because of the square almost diamond shape depending on if you want to look at it like that but yeah and they're the things that you can see up at the top they're huge Well, we've got to go down, haven't we? He says, with no, literally no grip on his shoes today, these are not the type of shoes that you go exploring out on. Oh, look at this! Wow! Oh, this is special, isn't it? Look at that! And then there's swans over in a distance. Fortunately, you can't see them. And there's a beautiful. Oh my god, look at that. I really hope the camera picks it up. If you can see, it's like a little sort of bridge, but it's obviously designed for the mill. But how beautiful. But then look at this running water that's coming down. So it's joining up the two sort of systems, the two streams. That sound. So I think this is in sort of, like I said before, we're in Surrey, so I think that it's sort of in this the area that it's in. I love the way that it's sort of difficult for you to park. You almost have to earn your stripes to try and find it, to try and get here. And I know that even when I come here and, you know, you look at the map and you go through stuff, you're never going to get all of it in. But isn't that the best thing though? That there's always a little part you're going to miss out on, just so you know, give you an excuse to come back. It's got to be right, surely. So we've just gone past the mixing house, and now we're coming to the corning house. Well, we're in the corning house, which was pressed powder was broken up and sorted into grain sizes. A spark from a hobnail boot caused an explosion in 1901, killing six men. But you probably knew that already. A man over there fishing again. You unfortunately can't see that, but I'll take my word for it. So we are here. Some dragon's teeth that are here, which is obviously one of these sort of things you don't never you don't really expect to sort of stumble across on your adventures that often, but when you do, always great to take a look. Keep going. So here we are, one of the expense magazines. The idea was really this was sort of used for storage. You can see the brick structure here. So this was used for uh, various stages of manufacturing or in between each stage of manufacturing so they'd sort of store it in there and then wait and then move it to the next part again in fantastic condition truly fantastic now this unassuming sort of building structure was the dusting house 
and it was where explosive dust was removed from the granulated powder. The dust was collected and returned to the system. This building marks the end of the new cut, which is obviously where we are now, you can see. But yeah, look, how unassuming. Just this sort of, these little brick sort of foundations and features that sort of come in to their own and you have to sort of almost look down. And then all of a sudden this brickwork just sort of shines through like sort of almost like it's desperately coming out of the ground to say look I've got a story to tell you need to hear it and then here we are at the we're at the end we're at the end of this stretch but really to appreciate it we've got to go back on ourselves we've got to go through we've got to go back and then we've got to keep looking so it's not the end not the end yet so like I said we need to come to the end because as I said to you before, there's a beautiful building here. This is called the West Lodge. And this might be the first thing you encounter if you come here, depending on whichever way you come in. This was where the workers had to check in. And they'd sort of be checked in, make sure they didn't have any matches or anything that could obviously set, the, uh, set it off. But this is where they would check in. You can't see it. I don't know why I've done that. You need to look. Look at that. Like a sort of guardhouse almost, but not. And you can see, you can look through the windows. It's obviously security and stuff, so we're not gonna, we can't go in. See there's a little fireplace there. Imagine all the stories that this wonderful place would have told. Little kitchen there. <laughs> Well, it's all strange when you look through a window, doesn't it? Expect someone to be on the other side waving hello to you. I suppose I always expect that when I look at, when I go to abandoned buildings, I often expect somebody to just sort of be in there still. You know what I mean? Like you look through windows, you think, oh wow. But yeah, here we are. We're at the other end. Here we are. We're there. <laughs> Blacksmith Lane. Powder Mills Place. The stream carries on, and obviously, the old building footprint where houses now take over in its place to show even the scale of this wonderful thing. So, we're obviously here and we'll go back on ourselves, but the way that it continues through, again, a sign that tells us gunpowder mills, all these indications of what this place used to be. I wonder if the road names will give us any clues. Again, yeah, Powder Mills Place. Can't see that. <laughs> All these wonderful little, wonderful little clues to let us know that history is surrounding us. History is all around us, right? Now, there's a few more buildings down here, but I really want to sort of focus on the stuff that you can get to, or that you can get to, but you can easily check out for yourself. But as we look over the stream, back on ourselves and then overlooking what is the mill pond and where the gentlemen are fishing come on we've got to go back let's keep going okay so what we need to do now is we need to cut across the new cut go over to the Tillingbourne side and really focus on the last two sort of surrounding structures that there are on this site really or few sorry there's about I think there's two or three more um and that'll pretty much be it but the point is we've done it we've come from one end to the other and now what we need to do is cross over really so let's go and do it Okay, so we're crossing over, crossing over to the other side. So we know we're almost coming to our end of our journey. Almost, not yet though. Still got all sides, so a few more things to show you. Isn't it wonderful? 
what amazes me is really the fact that the sounds of nature you know have now replaced what would have been heavy industry not only that heavy but dangerous industry these men knowing that working here at any point there could have been an accident which there was but the danger that they risked for the lack of money that they got really more importantly and to think that you know the sounds the noises everything that accumulated here at one point must have been quite a sight to see really Right, so we're coming up to the Pack Horse Bridge. The geese have arrived, apparently. We just wanted to let everybody know. <laughs> coming up to the Pack Horse Bridge. Again, you can imagine the sounds of these horses going across on this beautiful stream. So what we're looking at straight ahead of us is a pillbox. See it? Ring Doom. Looking down. Great position for it. Just uh, another reminder of this place is World War II past, really, isn't it? These things always pop up, don't they? Right, so it's going to be hard to see, but this is the press house. This powder was pressed into hexagonal prisms to be used in heavy guns. This is a shape is illustrated by the Chilworth Gunpowder Company Cricket Club logo. Which... There you go. So again, they cut all this down, which is great, but it's still quite difficult to see. But then I think we've been sport, really, for what we've had a look at today, to be honest with you. You can see the sort of brickwork that remains just about. And at one point again turning this dangerous chemical into something that could be used for something even more dangerous, war. We look down, you see some bolts sticking out of the ground. Cool, right? So, I've started where I finished. Thank you so much for coming along with me. This was Chilworth Gunpowder Mills. I didn't do all of it because, like I said, the point was for you to come down here. You know, you can check out the tramway, for example, that we sort of left out. That's fine. You can grab a map and you can really explore this place. For me, this was just to give you a brief history lesson, to give you a flavour, so that should you come down here, you'll have a really nice time. You know what to expect. But more importantly, if you can't come down here, that I've given you a really good flavour of what this place really was about. So thank you as always for watching. Much love to all of you out there. And in more words of Phoenix history, because history matters, it really does, doesn't it? And uh, I'll see you all very soon. Take care for now. Bye. Come on.